Am I still sexy? In last week's episode, Noah and Matt made it over the final height of land into the Agunish watershed. Here they rested for two days, watching the weather pass and reorganizing gear. But most importantly, waiting for the arrival of Alex and Eric to start the next two weeks down the infamous Agunish River. Welcome to the Land of Wild Rivers. Now that you know what the special delivery is, it's time to recap what our last two days look like in order to get here. Eric and I were unable to make the full month expedition, which added some logistical challenges. While Noah and Matt were sipping whiskey brulees on the beach, Eric and I were driving 18 hours from Toronto, Ontario to Natashquan, Quebec. Matt had shipped me his car key a month before the expedition so that Eric and I could pick up his car in Setil, Quebec and drive it the final four hours to get it closer to where we would be ending our trip. We had some challenges with batteries being dead and car alarms going off. But we managed to get everything sorted and had a beautiful drive to Natashquan. The nerves and excitement were high, and with this part of the trip behind us, now we just had to make it safely to the drop-off location we had agreed upon. Okay, so it's a big moment here for us. We just crossed over top of the Aguanish River, and she's beautiful. So, if all goes as planned, in two weeks, we'll be paddling down this river and coming right out here into the town of Aguanish. So cool. Flowing with the boys right down here, back into civilization. Pretty big moment right here, eh? Feels good. Feel like I'm home. Experience on boats, on canoe, on canoe, yeah, for sure. Canoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of experience. Lots of experience. Yeah, because it's not the gift, eh? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> not. It's not the gift, boy. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Young fellow. What have I have with that? <laughs> <laughs> Your battery is full. Yeah. Okay. Is full. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this kind of looks sketch. Yeah. <laughs> Put your fist in it, man. Game time. Game time. are here it's so weird after like hearing the odd one every couple of days in the distance to now hearing it and looking up and seeing one like coming in to land on the lake we're on for us and them to get here at the same time. Yeah. Yo! 
Oh my god! <laughs> Yo! What, what is good, boys? <laughs> This shiny new thing. Yeah. Wow, you want to trade? Yeah. Ready for some scratches. Oh, what's that you got there in your hand? <laughs> yeah, oh, those are some apple oh, crisps. Right. <laughs> there you go, fellas. Christian, I'm going to take these. Yo, you I guys did, take I, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> okay. Two weeks. It, well, 17 that's days. It, that's all. Fresh apples. Yeah. That's the best. God bless oh you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, what's <let's> good? Brother. <laughs> let's go! <laughs> Okay, sexy. Oh, <laughs> a sexy guy. Sexy guy. Sexy guy. <laughs> Alex and Eric agreed to join us for the second half of this trip. Very excited. I have not seen Alex or Eric for almost two years. I have not been on a trip with Alex since the Labrador trip two years ago. What a reunion and what a place to meet at. In the middle of nowhere in Quebec. About to run the Agunish. Oh my god. Watch your son, <laughs> It's been so long. I know, seriously. Holy buddy. buddy. Yo, good to yo, meet you guys. Man, good to meet you too, finally. seriously. This is sick. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Yeah. Buzz it. Wow. Oh my god. Yo, I literally like have the craziest feeling right now. Just like I can't believe like I how did we string this all together? Yeah. Like all those connections and like and then us being here at the same time you guys. I have like are here, goosebumps like, right now. Like it's like definitely worked out. We couldn't have worked out better with all the variables. Seriously. Weather even man. Like if you guys tried to just come up the last two days, you probably wouldn't have been able to. Our team is here to descend the mysterious Aguaniche River that spans 260 kilometers through Quebec's Côte Nord region, running south into the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. There is limited information available on this wild river, and our team has been researching and planning for months. We know this is going to be a challenging river, but there are three main sections that will make or break our success, and each of these are based around the steepest sections of the river. Right at the start, we enter the first and steepest section of the river where we descend almost 600 feet in elevation in just 30 kilometers. The second section is where we enter in and out of a lake called Lac Pado, where the river has another two big drops in elevation. The final make or break section is a stretch of canyon with multiple waterfalls that we anticipate will require a long portage to get around them. These three sections are far from the only challenges we will face but we know they are likely to be the most challenging and could end up taking us longer to complete than we expect. All right, boys, so we brought you a little bit of a surprise. You guys have been out here for how many days now? Day 17. Day 17, a little over two weeks. We couldn't let you guys go another day. <laughs> oh my God. Without a couple cold pops. They were oh, on ice, you. like literally two hours ago. That's so cold. <laughs> so <laughs> how is it? Two big canoe trips, two two trips, beer came from the sky. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if I'll ever, be, I'll ever be able to do a trip where we don't get a beer delivery halfway through. <laughs> oh my god, thanks dude. Oh. Yo, and be, because we don't let friends drink alone, we also brought two friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Two more for us? <laughs> no, sorry. A couple things. Haven't had beer in over two weeks, haven't felt anything cold for over two weeks. All right, cheers, cheers boys. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Cheers to the Agonish. Cheers, cheers to the Agonish. Mm. My mom packed this. I don't know what it is. It's heavy. I assume it's... Oh. oh my God. Are these Hello Dollies? Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pack full of Hello Dollies in here, which is the, the ultimate baked good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna eat these like an animal. You don't even want to see this on film. <laughs> All right, guys, the boys have arrived and they're just setting up their gear now. We're taking some time just to reset, catch up with everyone. And yeah, we're heading down the river today. Alex and Eric are starting this trip on the hardest 50K of the entire trip. So not much of a warm up for them. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard work. We're gonna have to do a lot of teamwork, 
a lot of communication and take our time and just enjoy uh, the Agunish, the Agunish proper. The hardest part of the trip is done. We're all here. I don't think that's true. <laughs> like technically, yes, but like I feel like we're about to go get like absolutely slapped on this next section. As a team of four friends, though. As a team of four friends. Love As a couple else. dudes looking for adventure. Love always prevails. For you watchers at home, you remember that. You have three friends by you, you can do anything. Yeah, it feels so weird to be paddling with you guys right now. Yeah. First set of class two rapids, pretty shallow for us, so we're already at the start landing here. These sets are super bony. Not only can we not paddle them, some of them we can't even line them. We're just dragging them over rocks, wearing down the bottom of our boats. We're hoping as we get farther down the Agunish, as more rivers and streams come in, the water level will go up. But right now it's very slow, and we gotta be careful of our ankles. Yeah, no time. I paddled like a kilometer of flat water and it's like, hey, there's a couple of clips in, there, in our first set. <laughs> yep. First brookie. First brookie. What happens when you go two weeks getting skunked in the James Bay watershed? You get rewarded. Oh. You want to go and I love that. Full of life, full of zest. Perfect. Perfect, dude. We'll just back paddle. Slow ourselves down. Go to this eddy. 12 o'clock. Paddle forward. Perfect. That's how we do it. And then thread the needle. Yo, rocks down here, straight. Yeah, brother. Five. And right side down. Woo! Yo, that was fun, that one. Oh. <laughs> Celebrate too soon. Yeah. Pull her through, we gotta pull her. Alright? Pull her! Nice. Alright. Back paddle. Back paddle. Is that a go for them? They gotta be careful. What's the signal for paddle hard? I don't know if there's a signal for that. Come on! Yeah! The boys got a brook trout. How do I look? You look pretty rugged. <laughs> Some flies around your face. How many kilometers do you think we went? <laughs> like six. eight. Is it six? <laughs> I was gonna say eight, uh, but something low. Pretty tough day for day one. Yeah, it's the first time we're setting up camp with four people. 
that means two tent pads, four bare barrels, and a lot more laughs. Oh, look at that, I already got smoked. Yeah. I've been looking at this river for over two years on a map, and we're finally here. And we have the perfect crew for this. I'm so happy this all worked out. So many plans had to work out for this to happen this day, for all of us to be here in the same place. It's very humbling, and it's good to have all the friends here. Hey to the boys, we're coming out of the sky alive. For the next two weeks, down the Aguaniche, the river we've talked about for a long time. To the Aguaniche. To the Aguaniche, to the river guys. Good, good travel, to good friends. To good times. Good times. Good safe passage. Woo! The guys brought ribs, potatoes, and onions for dinner tonight. So we're doing an old fashioned boil up with the potatoes. I'm gonna eat really well tonight. Fresh food, not rehydrated. Oh yeah. Oh my stuff. Can't rehydrate that. Maybe I should slice off a little piece of brookie. I knew they were bringing a couple treats from us, but I didn't think I'd be getting a ribs and potato dinner. Mmm. Those are so good. Do you see your name on that? This is a drink that Matt made up a few days back, and we got to share it with the boys so they get the full experience. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. Cheers. That's what it tastes like to flow down the egg <laughs> <laughs> The complexity of the dose. That's because yeah. we used raw, unfiltered egg <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a touch That's of jerry. The, yeah. yeah. the bacteria gives it that tang yeah. that you really need yeah. uh, a I whiskey brulee. Like the subtlety of the lab tea really brings out the flavor of the lime meal. It's the key. Good morning. Good morning. Coffee's on. Oh, dope. Morning, guys. I'm a bit hungover. Don't remember drinking that much whiskey in a long time. Yo, welcome to your first morning on the Agonish. <laughs> Yo, thank you, man. It's beautiful out here. Did you guys hear some rain this morning? Yeah. How do I look this morning? You look like you got in a fight last night. <laughs> I got in the octagon with some black flies. <laughs> do I actually look that bad? Look at me. <laughs> Your hat doesn't even fit. <laughs> Dude, this is insane. Supposed to be a cup of water, but I'm. I'm thinking I can do it with less. Definitely doesn't look like the most appetizing thing I've ever made, but it tastes amazing. How's that? Perfect. Yeah? Yeah. There's my veggies for the day. Today we have a lot of rapids. The entire map sheet is a rapid, essentially. The first 10 kilometers, probably rapids every, I don't know, there must be over 20 sets of rapids in, in the first map sheet. But a lot of them are R1 and 2s. If there's enough water, we can run them pretty easily. But if there's not enough water, like the like yesterday, we'll have to line each of those sets, and that'll be very slow and arduous. So we're just hoping that the that the water levels are high enough as we go down river, and just slowly pick apart this upper section of the Agu Niche. Day right, I guess. No, I think we're good. No. Go, draw, draw, draw. That was a bumpy one, eh? First portage of the day came pretty quick. It's a combination of the elevation drop and the lack of water at the headwaters of the system. But luckily for us, there's a lot of open country to portage. And we're definitely gonna use that for our advantage. See, I'm wearing my glasses today. First time on the trip. My eye was really irritating me yesterday. And 
I just don't want any sort of issue. So it's not that sunny today. So it's a good day to wear the glasses. Let's go left. No, let's go. We're going over there. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, don't lean left. Don't lean left. Nope. Alright, we're good. Forwards. Yo, that was exactly the line we wanted. A little 360 in the middle for style points. Style points. So we've had a crazy day of lining so far today. Lots of, uh, we have been able to hit some sets, but uh, other than that, lots of lining. Had our first portage earlier. Eric and I are definitely getting our feet wet pretty quick on this trip, getting right into the good stuff, and the bugs are not letting up. How far have we gone, like 5K? Not even, like three. <laughs> no. No, yeah. No, we've gone about five. That, that whole map is like 7K. <sighs> Slow day. <laughs> We've done less than five kilometers and we've been working pretty hard. This is a really choked up section of the river. We knew that this was going to be a grind, so part for the course out here. No, this is Parmesan, mustard, and meat. It packs well. This stuff has lasted 18 days or so and um, full of calories. Yeah, it keeps you going on these hard days. <laughs> what do we have going on on this side? I know, I can't see it in my left eye. <laughs> We're doing a pretty similar game plan here, but instead of the uh, the Parmesan cheese, we got uh, fresh Gouda, straight from the cow's udder. That Gouda Gouda. <laughs> that Gouda Gouda. Dig oh. in. Thank you. Oh. Race you to the bottom of the river. See you in 200 kilometers. We have a head start. Far. We got to a shoot where it's a definite portage, so we're dragging all our stuff up over this cliff to go down over the other side. We hadn't come across very much information on this river in our research before the trip. One of the reports we did find had information from a descent in 1985 by Guy Dorr and his team. One of his notes read, the small valley that the river takes sometimes takes on the appearance of a canyon and offers us a landscape whose roughness is matched only by splendor. We just found a fishing rod. The reel had fully grown in, like moss had fully grown around the reel. We've also noticed on this portage, there's actually cut wood. So this portage trail has actually been used by other people and potentially cut by Guy Dorr and that crew back in 1985. So cool. 
We're getting absolutely smashed by bugs. <laughs> it's party time. It's always tough making a decision to line a set of rapids. You never want to portage and you always try to make it work. But you got to know when not to make it work and just portage. We're trying to figure that out right now with this set. How's it look? Doable. Like a line? I didn't get to see the top. We should look at the top from that side, but like down here we could. Or like I feel like those boulders wouldn't be the worst thing to portage if we had to. There's one more little pile. Okay. So we are at the end of the day. We had one final set we wanted to portage and then find a place to camp, but there's mountains on either side of us. Literally just sheer cliffs. So there is nowhere for us to camp. So we're pushing on, lining this one final set and hoping there's something flatter up above. Are you guys gonna go right? Maybe. We're at the last portage of the day and it's more just climbing up the mountainside in a total bushwhack fashion. It is thick as it comes and they're just pouring rain, there's thundering and lightning. Let's go. The boys went river left. We went left. We went river right, and they had a very, very sketchy line situation. And we ended up just taking a portage, but they got, they got through, but we're still not through. But we are soaking wet from sweat and the, from the, the storm that just passed. We had ourselves a grind today. We were just like looking for a campsite, but there, there was just steep cliffs on either side of the river, not really anywhere that we could pitch a tent, and we just had to keep going down river, even though we were all drained. Luckily, we rounded a corner, and it, it, it wasn't looking good, but when we rounded this corner at the very end, we, we found this little spot that kind of cleared out, so it, we hiked up here, and we've got ourselves a little tent pad for the night. So we're just warm some soup to get our souls back to a good place and we're gonna have some dinner. That was a tough one at the end there. Really, like, I'd say my mental state is different now as opposed to when we started that last set. And I was like, there might not be a, an end in sight. But we're home now. And, we'll, and again, you just gotta remind yourself, at some point today I'll be warm and dry in my tent. Morning guys. We're all a little stiff today, but we got a lot done yesterday. On the map we did about 12 to 15 kilometers, but we checked off a large descent of the river. It poured rain all night, and we're hoping it's gonna rise the water just a little bit to help us get down some of these sets. A lot of them looked like they'd be a lot of fun to run, but there just was not enough water. It was very bony. You couldn't find a line without just bashing your canoe. But lining is better than portaging. We only portaged three times yesterday. The morale of the crew is still very good. Everyone's feeling like, like very strong, well rested. Two big wins from yesterday. No one hurt themselves, and both canoes still float. It was a good day. Yeah, we're gonna put together one rod, sacrificial rod, because uh, it looks like we're gonna be going through some honey holes, and I feel like the spirits can, can be lifted after a long portage with just one cast. Sometimes it just takes one cast, you know, so. We're hoping to catch some, some lunkers. It is time to get started. Everyone's ready, we're all mentally and physically fit for this. We're gonna do this.
that was awesome. Boys, that was awesome. That was a super fun one. That was a fun set. Yeah, thanks for scouting that one for us, boys. No worries. Tunnel hurt. Left of that one, yeah. and now right. Yeah, buddy. Woo! That was fun. That was sick. Little house left there. Yeah, we want to be left of that. Yeah. Then straight. No, no, left, left, left. Okay, straight. Nice, dude. That was awesome. That was really fun. One. That was really fun. Is it a brook? Yeah. Full oh, pike, 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 pike. Sorry. This is one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever been on. I think. So, like it's almost just like a really wide river section, but we've got these huge towering hills with like bare rock faces and caribou moss. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. And the colors, like these overcast days, the the greens are just like so vibrant. So over the last 50K, we've left the Labrador Quebec Plateau and we're descending down to the St. Lawrence. And earlier on our trip, we were seeing lots of beaches, but now we're seeing all these rocks and all this mountainous terrain. And really this terrain is the root system of an old mountain range that expanded all the way from the Great Lakes of Ontario to Labrador. When the, when the original continents were colliding and doing their thing, there's once a mountain range here that is the same size as modern day Himalayas. And what we're seeing now is over time, over the last billion years, this mountain range has weathered down and broken down. And how, how, crust, how continental crust works, it kind of works like an iceberg. It floats on the mantle. And as the top erodes down, uh, the actual crust itself lifts up and the term is called isostasy. So here, we are actually in the root system of a Precambrian mountain range that is about a billion years old. The Grenville province, about a billion years old, this rock is. And we're just a couple pieces of organic matter floating down the Agunish. <laughs> the, rocks don't, the rocks don't care about us. They're gonna keep doing their thing over time. And in another billion years, this might be flat as, this might not even be a river anymore. It might just be flat land. We did a little scouting of the set. Obviously we're not running it, but it was figuring out what the best portage route would be. River left or river right. River left is a boulder garden. River right is thick alders. So I think we're gonna go with the boulder route option, which has its own difficulties. Mostly really just rolling your ankles and being aware of footing. But we'll probably just go lighter loads and do that very slowly over 50 meters or so.
Isn't that something? That's amazing, man. Can't believe we came down that. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Let's get these little bugs out here. Oh my, oh my god, in eyeball. The last place we need a black fly. That was my right one too, my good one. It's the mandarin. We found the mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> It's a buffet of human flesh. <laughs> oh, check out this guy's right eye. <laughs> it's, so, yeah, it's untouched. Don't duck, don't duck in on his right eye yet. <laughs> Beautiful. Rashi lines. Oh, big. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, some fresh brookies from the Aguaniche. We got scalloped potatoes mixed with good old Uncle Ben's uh, rice. Big portage tomorrow morning, and it all starts with a good nourishment at dinner. Yeah. Going with a hot and spicy fish ramen. You get your Aguaniche trout. You just take it right off. It's pretty clean. <laughs> we have ourselves a Bannock cooking festival right now. Noah's a bit of a vet when it comes to Bannock. Eric is going to be making his first Bannock since the Catawagamy trip. And it was not good Bannock on that trip. And so we're really hoping that things turn around on this one. You're using the donut trick, eh? So this year I wanted to add a little more flavor and calories to the Bannock. So I've created these bombs, which there are a couple different types in here, but this is a combination of raisins, pumpkin seeds, shredded coconut, and pitted dates. I add that to the Bannock, mix it up, and serve it with a little peanut butter and jay. And it's been pretty tasty, but it's also been, if you're trying to get a thousand calories from Bannock, uh, they're gonna be big slabs. But that's all right, because they're usually pretty hungry and ravenous by lunchtime anyways. In our bannock, we have uh, flour and salt and uh, baking powder. <laughs> Did you put a baking powder bomb in ours? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. flavor bomb and baking powder. <laughs> <laughs> and salt. Did you get it? That was a quick snap. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's the key. No, no, that is a really nice looking bannock. Yo, dude, I appreciate that. It's never looked this good. We know the next few days are going to be very hard, so we ended a little earlier today to enjoy this great campsite with some good friends. We don't want to keep pushing it and miss out on these sunny early evenings at camp. And it's one of those things you got to balance the push and when not to push. And tonight we did not want to push down the next set of waterfalls because we know tomorrow morning it's going to be a long, tough morning portaging around this big set that drops at a pretty, pretty rapid pace. So we'll see you then. All right, so there weren't many flat spots down around base camp at the very bottom. So Eric and I climbed up to the top and set our tent up with a beautiful view of the river, which we'll only be able to see while we're outside of the tent, but still beautiful little spot up here. Quite the climb. <laughs> 